So now we're going to move on to artifacts. What are artifacts? Well, artifacts is going to be an image that is displayed on the screen that doesn't really exist. And there's numerous artifacts that you are going to encounter. I'm going to just show some of the more common ones that exist and explain why they exist. Well, I've mentioned multiple times attenuation throughout this presentation. Attenuation, again, is weakening of the sound as it moves into and out of the body. Now, the degree of attenuation leads to artifact. And here you can see, here's our signal coming in. That signal is getting weaker and weaker as it attenuated the sound, as, it, as the sound is attenuated as it moves down through the body. Now, there's numerous ways that your sound can be attenuated as it moves down through the tissues. That includes reflection, refraction, and absorption. The first artifact I want to talk to you about is shadowing. And that's usually a result of high attenuation, specifically clean shadowing. What we have here is a gallbladder, and you can see numerous stones here. And you'll see behind those stones lots of what we call clean shadowing. It's almost completely dropped out in black. You'll see shadowing any time that you're ultrasounding gallstones, kidney stones, bone, some foreign bodies. Let's take a look at why it exists. Well, here's your ultrasound beam that's going down and hitting your target. Now, in this case, the target is a very bright reflector. It also may be absorbing some of that sound. The bottom line is the sound, once it gets to this structure, does not go beyond this structure because, again, this structure is brightly reflective, also highly absorptive. So you see directly behind your target there, no sound gets through. So how does the ultrasound machine interpret this? The ultrasound machine is not hearing the sound coming back behind that structure. Therefore, it deems it to be anechoic behind that structure. So it just overlies a black stripe behind it. Hence, the stripe that comes behind your gallstone. Now let's talk about another artifact. It's enhancement. Take a look at this part of your ultrasound image and compare it to this part of your ultrasound image. You can see here it's very hyperechoic relative to this section of the ultrasound image. Now it's the same tissue, it's both liver, but why is this part hyperechoic and this part not? This is an example of enhancement. Normally your ultrasound beam is produced and it evenly attenuates as it moves down through the tissues. You can see right there, your sound beam is attenuating evenly as it moves down through those tissues. And what you get is a homogeneous gray screen, assuming there was no targets down there to change that attenuation. Now let's overlie a structure that does not attenuate very well. Now you can see here, as the sound travels down through the tissues, it initially is evenly attenuating until it gets to this structure right here, which has low attenuation. It really provides no impedance to the sound. So that sound through transmits very easily. And on the posterior aspect of that structure, the sound is still quite strong compared to the surrounding structures. So you're going to get a large echo from right here compared to right here or right here. So let's see how the ultrasound machine will interpret that. You'll notice you get a bright echo returning compared to the surrounding tissues. And the machine is going to interpret the posterior aspect of this cystic structure as hyperechoic and apply bright white pixels behind it relative to the surrounding tissues. So here you go. There's your gallbladder here. Your gallbladder is full of bile. It's a fluid that provides very low attenuation. So the sound that is getting to this point, to this interface, compared to the sound that is getting here, is much stronger. You have a much brighter echo because it hasn't been attenuated. You also see this when you're ultrasounding the bladder, uh, and when you're ultrasounding abscesses, and when you're ultrasounding the blood-filled chambers of the heart, you'll notice something called enhancement, also called increased through transmission. Now let's take a look at edge artifact. This here is multiple blood vessels. 
And you can see on the edge of these vessels, there's actually shadow present. This is called edge artifact. And it's a direct result of something called refraction or bending of the sound. So let's have a look at how that happens. You have your sound beam here that has been produced and it travels down to your cystic structure. And usually that is the case. It's a cystic structure that is present, most commonly blood vessels, but sometimes you'll see it around the bladder, around the uterus, around the kidneys. Any curved structure will produce this. What happens is the sound is bent or refracted out off the edges of your target structure. Because that sound was bent off of the edges of your curved structure, there is no transmission of sound in the regions immediately lateral to your target. As you can see right here, there is sound that is transmitted actually through your target, and then beyond the extreme margins of your target, there is still sound transmission, but you're not getting any sound return in this area here. And therefore, the machine is going to interpret that area as anechoic and lay black stripes there. So let's have a look at a animation that kind of illustrates what I'm trying to say. You can see that sound comes down and then is refracted off to the sides, having no transmission in the region immediately lateral to your target. Therefore, you're going to have the shadowing immediately lateral to your target. And here it is again. You can see the shadowing on either side of these vessels. Now reverberation. Reverberation is a direct result of very strong reflectors. In this case here, this is actually the reverberation. This is the artifact. This here is a rib. This right here is just the edge of a rib. You have the intercostal muscles. This is the interface between the visceral and parietal pleura. Anytime you have a medium change, that is the soft tissues of the muscle to the air of the lung, you're going to have bright reflection. That's why you have this bright reflector here. So let's go on and illustrate actually how this happens. So you're going to notice that the sound is going to come down, hit this bright reflector, and come back to the probe then you'll notice that that probe, which is also a bright reflector, is going to reflect that initial impulse back to your bright reflector here. And that single impulse is going to oscillate back and forth between your reflector and the transducer face, which is also a reflector in this case. And each time that sound comes back and hits the face of that probe, it's going to register as an echo. And because of the time, that passes in between each reverberation, you're gonna see that echo lie deeper and deeper across your ultrasound screen. So let's have a look at the animation. So there you go, four echoes all generated off of the initial impulse. Now let's talk about Comet Tail. Comet Tail is very similar to your reverberation artifact. Again, it is related to having a strong reflector in your field. In this case, and specifically, it's a metallic BB. And you can see these bright white hyperechoic lines very tightly spaced together that are going deeper and deeper across your ultrasound screen. So let's have a look at how Comet Tail is made. Comet tail, you will notice that your impulse comes down, hits your bright reflector, you'll have some of that sound that is transmitted through, and that sound will now oscillate back and forth inside of this metallic structure. And each time that sound rebounds to the superficial surface of your reflector, some of that sound is sent back to the ultrasound probe, and again, you are going to get a echo on your screen. So here I've basically illustrated that. You had your initial impulse come down, which is indicated by the white arrows. And now that sound is oscillating inside your target here. And each time it comes back to the superficial surface, you get a signal sent back to the probe. 
So let's have a look at how that would work with this illustration. Okay, and you can see here where you have your initial reflector. This is a little bit misleading. Really, you would only see the anterior leading edge the best and then you have this common tail artifact posterior let's have a look at that one more time and there is the actual ultrasound image associated with a true common tail artifact common tail artifact is usually going to be associated with metallic foreign bodies let's talk about ring down artifact Ring down artifact looks very similar to comet tail artifact, and they are often confused. Ring down artifact is usually associated with air, and is also called air artifact. Air artifact will show a bright white leading edge with shadow posterior. You can differentiate that, however, from clean shadowing, because clean shadow will be a frank black shadow posterior, whereas ring down or dirty shadowing has kind of a mixed echogenic appearance in that shadow deep to the target. The reason ring down artifact exists is because of reflector resonance. Those water molecules in between those air molecules will actually vibrate or resonate, producing vibrations that are sent back to the ultrasound probe and it is going to interpret those as echoes. Now let's take a look at ring down artifact. What we have here is portal venous gas in a patient who had a bowel infarct. We have here dynamic portal venous gas and static portal venous gas that is collected up in the branches of the portal vein within the liver parenchyma here anterior. And you can see dynamic gas with that gas going through the portal vein. And you see that shattering posterior to that. So let's have a look at ring down artifact. Again, if you recall, the sound is going to hit your target. It's going to vibrate, which is going to send an impulse back to the ultrasound probe, which is going to cause a shadow posterior. And you can see up here, it looks very similar to your comet tail artifact. But in this case, again, it's ring down artifact. Most of the time, this is going to be associated with gas. Whereas comet tail artifact is going to be associated with some kind of metallic forward and body or other bright reflectors within the salt tissues. Remember in the case of ring down, it is resonation of the molecules of water in between the gas and comet tail is going to be a bright reflector that is going to generate multiple impulses going back to the scan surface off of a single sound pulse generated from the ultrasound probe. Again, it produces a dirty shadow. You can see here in this portal venous gas case. And the far field of the ring down artifact is completely obliterated. And that is the reason that air is often called the enemy of ultrasound because you really can't ultrasound through that air. Here's another example. This is a abdominal aortic aneurysm. But if you look to either side, you can see that ring down artifact coming off of the gas that's in the loops of bow here, giving this dirty shadowing on either side. Again, this is also often called air artifact. So now let's take a look at mirroring. Mirroring is a result of strong reflection as well as refraction. You can see here the liver. This is the diaphragm. And this is a reflection of the liver where the lung actually sits. Again, this is called mirroring artifact. And let's have a look at how this happens. So here is the ultrasound screen. Here is the diaphragm right here. And this would be our real images, in this case, liver. And you can see you have a sound impulse come down. Some of that sound is refracted off of let's say a blood vessel in the liver, it goes and hits the diaphragm, which is a bright reflector, and then that returns back up to the ultrasound face. The machine recognizes the length of time 
that it took for the sound to return. And then it's going to place a false image or mirrored image in this area a little bit deeper to the real image. And then also you can see here some more reverberation similar to when we saw our Comet Tail artifact earlier. You have the sound bouncing back and forth between two reflectors. That sound eventually gets through. It the machine does know that there was a gap of time between the return of the signal. Therefore, it places that false image or mirrored image a little bit deeper than the true image. Now let's have a look at how this happens. There you go. Some of the sound is refracted off. It hits the diaphragm, bounces back to the probe. And then you get your true image and your false image place. And here's just another example of mirror imaging, also known as mirror artifact. And here again, another example of a mirror artifact. You can see right here initially, you can see a mirror of the kidney as well, right in this area right there. Another artifact that you'll often encounter, usually with large volume pleural fusions or large volume ascites, this is called side lobe artifact. Again, this is a result of strong reflection, usually next to something that is anechoic, in this case, a large pleural effusion. You can see the liver here. We can see lung tissue that has been collapsed down or atelectatic lung tissue being compressed by pleural effusion. And then you see some echo here. It looks a lot like low level echoes that would be associated with some, or some kind of debris, which might make you think that possibly this is a empyema. Let's have a look at where this comes about. Well, we've already talked about the linear arrays of our ultrasound beams. These would be the main beams. But coming off of those main beams are something called side lobes, where we have little small beams coming off the side of those main beams. So we have our impulse that is generated. It goes down and hits a true reflector, and it returns back. And that's how we get this image that is outlined in yellow. Here we have our impulse that goes down hits the posterior chest wall and you get a reflection and that's how we get this image down here this bright white image now with regards to our actual side lobe artifact that i've outlined right here we have our sound pulse that's generated and it gives off side lobes like what we talked about earlier well those side lobes are reflected back to the ultrasound face the machine is going to interpret that these reflections are a part of this main beam that was sent out. Therefore, it's going to overlie your side lobe artifact over here. So what you're seeing is a false image of this structure right here. Here's another example. This is with the CITES. You can see right here some bowel. And then you can see a side lobe artifact of that right here. You'll also commonly see this in a full urinary bladder or in a distended gallbladder. In the posterior aspects of either case, you'll see what looks like debris present. If you change the angle of the probe and that echogenicity resolves, then clearly it was just side lobe artifact and not actual gallbladder sludge or urinary bladder debris. Okay, that concludes the ultrasound physics and fundamentals discussion. If you have any questions, please let me know at the email on your screen. Mm -hmm.